Welcome back to the Skull and Bones Hype Train, everybody. Thank you for tuning in yet again. Um, we are less than a week away from the open beta, but uh, I wanted to make a video today to talk about the uh, the premium version of Skull and Bones versus the uh, standard version and discuss whether or not I think it's worth it or not. Um, this is a interesting subject. Um, as more and more games and uh, online experiences are coming through as a service, there is a question as to whether or not it's even worth buying games anymore. And if you buy games, there's a question of whether or not you actually own them. And this is a, a subject of great debate between uh, me and my friends. Um, and without giving away their real names, let's just call them uh, Dean Malenko, Q, and Sir Bron of the Blackwater. Now, we've had some very interesting debates over the last uh, few years about whether or not... Uh, owning games is exactly what it used to mean. I mean, there's definitely an old school mentality um, amongst most gamers that when you pay for something, you should own it. And I understand that. I do understand that as um, someone who spends a lot of money on games every year. I mean, I've been a day one subscriber to Game Pass Ultimate, and I still, despite having that subscription service, continue to spend money every year on new games that are not in that service. Um, and I own everything digitally these days. I sold my last physical game back in 2016, I think, and I've been completely digital since then. Um, so I'm one of these consumers that really is just embracing the future. And um, to be honest, I'm not looking back because it's just convenient. The man is angry enough. Yes, I know it costs money, but that's why I go to work. Um, but that being said, let's talk about um, Ubisoft in particular. So Ubisoft, I think, is notorious for when they release a new game. Is They always want to charge full price for their games. They always create the perception that they're all AAA um, games in quality, um, although people obviously debate that greatly. Oh, for shame. Um, but they always have multiple versions of their games. They usually have a deluxe version, a gold version, and usually an ultimate version. Jars full of pig shit. Now, whenever I've bought Ubisoft games and... I typically bought all the games in all the Ubisoft series that I enjoy. Um, I tend to buy the one that will include at least the year one season pass for DLC. Um, I don't normally buy them full price, I admit. Normally I have such a backlog that there's no need for me to go out and buy a game the day it releases. But the last full price Ubisoft game that I paid for was Ghost Recon Breakpoint, of which I paid for the gold version um, in Canadian dollars, I think it was $130 I paid for that on day one. Um, at that time, maybe I felt like it was, it was a little bit of an expensive purchase because that game didn't launch in the best um, in the best state. However, over, the over time, they did some tremendous updates to that game, and the DLC content that came for that game, the extra um, story missions, were absolutely fantastic, in, uh, in particular the Splinter Cell mission that came with it. Um, so I don't feel like I was robbed, really, considering I think I have 200-plus hours in that game overall. So, I mean, I paid you know, a, a, a chunk of change at the front end of that, but I got a lot of entertainment value for it. And, and really, that's how I measure or not whether it's not something is worth the purchase. And I'm trying to apply that to um, Skull and Bones. But again, it boils down to that thing of people wondering, who would spend that kind of money on a, on a Ubisoft game? Well, me, if I'm being honest. It's me that spends that kind of money on Ubisoft games. Nice to meet you. Um, yes, I am getting the premium version. I'll say I have got the premium version of Skull and Bones pre-ordered. And I'm going to put this in Canadian dollars and Xbox pricing because that's the currency I use and that's the platform I use. So the base game is $89.99 plus tax. The premium game is $129.99 plus tax. About a 45% price difference. And for that 45% extra, you get the following additions. You get the Ballad of Bloody Bones collection, which includes a captain outfit and a cosmetic and cosmetic ship items. So cosmetics which are probably going to be available in the store separately anyway, and probably only, you're probably only getting them at a discount when you factor in everything else that's in the premium pass. But again, that's not the reason I'm getting it. The two extra missions, including the Ashen Corsair and the Bloody Bones Legacy, which have exclusive rewards. Now, I know Ubisoft, 
even if you don't have the premium version, they're probably going to roll these missions into the main game eventually, um, either through the Ubisoft Connect app for people that spend points on it and stuff like that, or they might add them as paid missions through the store. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I do like the idea of extra content. I'm someone who soaks up content in these games, even ones as, as wide um, as Ubisoft creates. Game penalty! Um, next, we have a digital art book and selected game soundtrack. This one, again, it, it sounds cool, but let's be real. The digital art book is going to be online within a day. You're going to be able to find it if you do, you know, use the power of Google or, or Reddit or whatever. It'll be on there. And the game soundtrack is going to land on Spotify and other music services. So, again, not really a huge benefit there. But then we have the Smuggler's Pass token, which is essentially Skull and Bones' Battle Pass token. Now, if I look at this, I suspect that when you buy that separately, it'll cost about $14 Canadian. And I'm basing that on the price of a season for the Division 2 which seasons also run for about two to three months. I might be wrong. It might be more expensive. It might be less expensive, but I'm, I'm basing it on that. Um, so again, it, you're, not, you're paying more for that up front for the premium edition, but you are getting other things included. And then, of course, there is the three days early access. This is just obviously an incentive to try and get people who are, like myself, who are hyped about the game and want to be in there as soon as possible, chance to get in there. A little ahead of time and and it's it's kind of awkward because they're having the open beta the days before that so people everyone's going to be playing who wants to play this game is going to be playing it ahead of the uh the launch for the premium version and then those that have the premium version only have to wait a couple of days whereas those that don't have the premium version have to wait a week um overall do i think it's going to be worth it for most people to get the premium edition probably not Unless you're like myself, I mean, I'm coming from a position, you know, where, I've, where I can afford to spend the money on the premium version. Um, I am expecting to get a thousand plus hours of entertainment out of this game, potentially, or, you know, at least several hundred hours of entertainment. And if I get that and I've spent $130 plus tax, I'm not going to feel ripped off by it. But that's what I'm weighing my, uh, my justification against. It's not the fact I'm going to own the game or all these different extras that come with it it's the hours of entertainment i'm hoping to get from it and this is a decision i think you have to make for yourselves um but let's not forget there is also another option if you subscribe to ubisoft plus for one month you can get the premium access including the three days early access straight away and probably within that month you'll have the ability to complete the, the two extra missions and and whatnot. I'm not sure you're not sure you get a chance to use a smuggler's pass token, but um, even if you maintain a subscription, um, smuggler's pass tokens are included in Ubisoft Plus Premium, I believe. Um, someone correct me if I'm wrong about that, but I think that is the case. There is also the belief that this game is going to end up in sale pretty quickly, and 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 I think that's probably going to happen as well. Ubisoft does have a tendency to heavily discount games quickly upon. Uh, upon the initial uh, sales cycle completing. So I, I expect there will be a number of people who will pay for a one month of uh, Ubisoft Plus, play this game, and if they like it enough, we'll probably pick it up um, in sale the first time, it drops, um, first time it drops its price. But yeah, as my friends would say, as we're talking about this, who wants to buy these games? Well, there's a few of us out there, definitely. I've seen from the comments on the videos I've made for Skull and Bones that there is definitely hype for this game. People do want to play it. Whether or not people will like it remains to be seen. But uh, I'm hopeful. And uh, yeah, I plan to keep my Skull and Bones content going for the foreseeable at this rate. But yeah, if you've made it this far, um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please leave a like, comment, um, subscribe, and share if you will. Thank you very much.